big tech companies are some of the most electricity thirsty companies in the world. Meta, which owns Facebook, uses about the same amount of energy as all the homes in Utah put together. Google uses roughly the same as all the homes in Kentucky. Together, the three highest guzzlers, Microsoft, Meta, and Google, used as much electricity in 2022 as all the homes in Michigan. This wasn't always the case. Looking back just a few years, the tech companies were using drastically less energy than companies like Walmart. Since then, Walmart has actually reduced its energy use despite its massive real estate footprint. The same with Ford, which despite having dozens of giant factories, has flattened its energy use. How have tech companies surpassed the energy usage of car companies, giant retailers, and enough homes to fill entire states? The answer, data centers. Just look at these Google Earth photos of Meta's largest data center in Altoona, Iowa. In 2012, the future 100 share way didn't exist. It was farmland. By 2016, it was a fully operational data center with multiple buildings using about the same energy as a mid-sized residential town of about 47,000 homes. And by 2022, it had expanded yet again, roughly doubling in size and energy consumption. The story is the same at nearly all of Meta's data centers. There are thousands of data centers across the United States. Tech companies say this is not a problem, nothing to see here, because they pay to build lots of solar and wind energy. Google has claimed it has been carbon neutral thanks to offsets since 2007. It's always been kind of a founding value for us. We've been carbon neutral since 2007. Specifically, they use a program that pays energy companies to build green energy, like solar and wind farms. And it sounds great in theory, but it's not that simple. To understand why, imagine that a new data center is being built in Virginia, while a solar farm is being built over in California or Nevada, where there's more sun. The data center and the solar farm will be part of two different electric grids. And those grids will run on all kinds of energy sources, including fossil fuels. The solar energy will stay on its local grid, and the data center will get energy from its own grid. The electricity generated from the solar farm won't go to the data center on the other side of the country. The other problem is California has a lot of solar already. You can run into this issue of essentially having too much solar. This imbalance has been dubbed the duck curve. It's belly, the time of day when solar production can exceed demand. So that's the duck curve? That's the duck curve. Yeah, there it is. Building another solar farm in California would not be as good for the planet as building one in, say, the Northeast, which has less solar and relies more on fossil fuels for daytime electricity use. The end result is that all this green energy going up in the Sun Belt isn't canceling out the electricity used by data centers. To their credit, Google acknowledges this even if you do have to find it fairly deep in its sustainability policy documents. Starting in 2019, Google switched the way it talks about its climate goals. It transitioned to 24-7 carbon-free energy, or CFE. This measures the energy source on an hourly basis that Google's data centers are actually using. It's an acknowledgement that carbon neutrality isn't enough. In 2021, Microsoft followed suit. This graphic is from Google's report. The green lines are the clean energy produced by the solar and wind farms Google pays for. The black line is the data center energy use. When there isn't enough green energy, they use fossil fuels. In that graphic, any black you see is dirty electricity powering a Google data center. Since 2019, Google has been reporting a CFE score for its data centers. 100% means the data center is powered entirely by clean energy at all times of day and does not use any fossil fuels. A score of zero means it is entirely powered by fossil fuels. In 2019, the CFE score for all of Google's data centers combined was 61%. 
In 2020, it went up to 67%, meaning two-thirds of the electricity used by Google's data centers was truly being powered by carbon-free energy. Not bad. But since then, Google has been backsliding. Google's carbon emissions increased 13% compared to last year and nearly 50% over the past five years. This is according to the company's 2024 environmental report. And the numbers mark a major setback in Google's ambitious goal to achieve net zero emissions by the end of this decade. And the report points the finger of blame at the increasing energy demand for artificial intelligence. In other words, even though Google is paying to build more solar and wind farms than ever, it can't keep up with all the new data center capacity it is building to power its AI ambitions. Meaning, as long as it keeps expanding AI, Google's not going to hit its climate goals. Google is the only one that reports CFE scores. But you can bet that if Google is struggling with clean energy, so are the other tech giants, like Meta and Microsoft. The takeaway is, there are huge climate costs to these companies' AI ambitions. In a lot of ways, they're going backwards.